Hi everybody, this is Coordination of the Day with me, Nicholas Rodina, for Sound Nerds Unite. So I'm going to walk you through my coordination today. So we're going to start from kind of scratch and kind of walk you through my workflow and hopefully it'll help you. So if you've watched some of the videos before, you've seen that um, I generally start with a file from the night before and a lot of the other information you might need to know is um, in some other videos as far as why I do what I do and all that but let's just walk through the coordination so we're gonna start from the file from yesterday we were in st. Louis yesterday and today we're in Milwaukee at the Eagles ballroom the beautiful Eagles ballroom so I'm just gonna do a quick save as um, with the date I think it's the seventh I don't remember um, and then put Milwaukee Eagle and I'll put a zip six three one one two Right. Yeah. Cool. Great. So uh, first things first is I will get rid of scan data from the previous file or the previous location. So the reason why I work off of the same file is to keep it all consistent. All right. So we've, we've deleted all of the scan data. So we're going to um, go ahead and enter the correct TV uh, zip code for the TV channels in the area. Just a reminder, um, this is a newer um, window for the latest version of wireless workbench. So if yours looks different, it's because you might be on an older version. So we are in uh, Milwaukee, which is 5-2... Oh, I wrote the wrong thing down earlier, but 5 three, two, three, three. So one thing to, to kind of pay attention here is this preserve selected TV channels on new search. I want to uncheck that because I'm in a whole different location. So I want to be able to kind of see the whole thing, everything, and not have anything uh, from the previous city or search. So we're searching for TV channels. Um, just a reminder, um, these TV channels correspond to the digital TV channel, not the vanity name of the channel. So like if your city has channel nine, it's not actually channel nine. It could be channel 22, who knows. So what I usually do is um, kind of scroll through here and see kind of what the environment's like, how close TV channels are. But one quirk that maybe you all can help me with wireless workbench is if I manually entered my own TV channels, it doesn't get rid of those on a new search. So I'm just going to make sure I uncheck any user assigned, <coughs> excuse me, any user, see that user assigned channels that I included myself in the previous coordination. So it's one thing to kind of pay attention here is that you see that the distance from where I am to the TV channel transmitter is quite close. And just looking at the receivers right now, um, it's a pretty hot RF environment. These are all very high powered channels. Anyhow, that's a quick look, and then we're gonna save that. So if you look over here, it's really good to expand your window. If you're on a Mac, it's two fingers up and down. We'll scroll through this. But you're basically looking at the whole spectrum that we're working with, which is usually 470 to 608. These numbers down here correspond to the digital TV channels. So 25, that's a six megahertz chunk of the spectrum, which is allocated for a digital TV channel. So for example, channel 18, channel 19, you'll see here, channel 18, channel 19 are checked. And actually that should be unchecked. Okay, cool. So now we've got that information in. We'll do a quick save. And now we're gonna go ahead and import some actual scan data of the environment. Um, this is only works for sure units that are networkable. So you can't network a Sennheiser unit into this. It has to be sure units. You can coordinate for any brand almost and model, which is great. But um, the data itself can only be imported with sure units that support that. So I have kind of a mishmash of different types of units. So I have some Axiant in here, and the cool thing about Axiant is that the G57 band covers the entire spectrum that we're used to using, or that we're allowed to use, 470 to 607 or 608. Um, even though that covers the whole thing, I want to get a scan of every unit I have, um, even if it overlaps. So I've got some Axiant, I've got some ULX, I've got some UR4Ds, etc. So I've checked all those, and hitting start. And you'll see here that it starts doing the scan in the different bands. So while this is happening, um, one quick note is before you start doing this, make sure your transmitters for your IEMs are off. You didn't forget to turn them off from the night before or, or you forgot to turn them off before you started doing this because they will pick up in this scan, which you don't want. 
So I'm going to grab one of my Q or my packs from a P my PSM 1000s, and I'm going to do a scan on the IEM pack, and then I'm going to import that data into the receiver or the transmitter for the IEM, the PSM 1000, and then import that into the unit or into the software. So as this is scanning, I'm going to go up to the deck. Important to do that on the deck and uh, on the PSM 1000 packs, the P10Rs. If you uh, get into the menu and go into radio, there is a um, option for full scan, and I'll do a full scan on the stage and then come back and import this data. So I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So I have done a scan with the P10R pack, the IEM pack, and now I'm going to import that data into the transmitter for the PSM 1000. So I'm going to do that now. And the way you do that is on the unit itself, on the transmitter, on the PSM 1000 transmitter. You will um, hit sync and then spectrum and sync scan. And then you just use the IR from the pack and import the data off of the pack onto the PSM 1000. So I'm going to do that now. All right, so in order to get that data off of the hardware unit, we'll go down here to hardware imports, which, sorry, there we go. And that's the first unit for me. So that's imported the data, we're done with that. So you can see here on the left, you can toggle on and off what you're seeing in the window here. And what that also means is not just what you're seeing, but what the software is, um, including in its calculations. So if you unclicked one of these things to not see it, it's also taking it out of the uh, math, as far as I know. So if you see here, the ears are down there, you see that? And you also can notice right away that the noise floor of a PSM 1000 receiver is much lower. Um, my current antenna situation needs to be padded down a smidge. Um, I may do that with this, we'll see. <clears throat> Once again, I'll do a save. So uh, first things first, and now we have the scan data in, we're going to kind of compare what TV channels are, are in the air area and what is a TV channel but didn't come up as a TV channel, meaning it wasn't listed over here in the TV channels dialog. Because of the repack right now in the States, um, there are TV channels that are moving to another TV channel, digital TV channel. It's being repacked. So. What that means is the database for the TV channels might not be 100% up to date. So it's also always good to go through here and just use your own judgment about what um, is a TV channel, basically. So what I'll do is I will unclick TV channels. Sorry, I'll unclick additional exclusions. Remember, in exclusion, the way why things get blue in this thing is because of the exclusion threshold. What Wireless Workbench is doing, among many other things, is it saying anything that's above this red line or negative 85 dBm, do not coordinate a frequency over it. And I don't mess with the exclusion threshold very much. I don't really need to. Um, I coordinate about 50 frequencies a day and I never really need to adjust that. I'd rather do other things before I adjust that parameter. So if you see here, we'll put TV channels back on, look here. 16 and 17 is definitely a TV channel. 18 is no longer a TV channel. So we'll go over here and we'll say 16 and 17 is definitely a TV channel. 18 probably got repacked. So just use your best judgment here. Once again, that's a TV channel for sure. 21 looks like a perfect six megahertz chunk. Um, so we'll go here. Oh, sorry, 21, sidetracked. Boom, boom, there's that. You notice here on 25, there's no activity here except for this little blip. It's probably been a repacked TV channel. We'll see what 25 looks like. Um, I'm gonna say, nope, it's not really a TV channel. We'll go over here and we'll see it again. It's happening all over the place. So this here is gonna give us some challenges today for sure. But it looks like 17 through 22, or sorry, 27 through 32 are all TV channels. So we'll go back here and we'll go 27, 29, what did I say 32? Is that what I said? Yes. Now 33, 
and 34 look okay. So I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna say those are probably repacked channels, so we'll do that. And then 36 definitely is a TV channel. So what I'm doing here is I'm just using my own judgment and looking at the actual data so it's not some mystery and say where I want things to coordinate to. So that's that. So the whole spectrum it looks like we've accounted for the correct TV channels. Now, I'm going to unlock all my frequencies from the night before. I'll do a quick save. And now I'm going to calculate. So what I'm looking for here is this number at the bottom here. 50 out of 50, or how many channels you need. Um, <coughs> if wireless workbench is having, having trouble coordinating, you can do tricks like kind of what I've already done here, which let's just change this for sure. There's ways to, kind of, to pack more coordinated frequencies into a space, but that can cause issues if the RF environment is noisy. So if, you, if you're in trouble, go down to more frequencies. And the way I do that is I click on the bar for the, the unit, not that, but the bar there. Go to compatibility and choose something. So we're just gonna go standard just to see what this does for today. This is the most robust, not the most robust, but this is kind of the standard coordination space. And see what happens if we still get 50 out of 50. So it's, having, it's having some trouble with some backup freaks. So let's just see here. So let's just see which, the H4 spectrum. Let's go ahead and just uh, make this more frequency and see if that helps. Kind of helps. So just to, to keep it simpler, we'll just open up oops, open up some stuff here to make it a little bit easier. We'll go back to the top. We'll go to more frequencies. Now the only difference between um, the way Wireless Workbench does its math for primary frequencies or backup frequencies, the math is no different. It's just it's going to coordinate primary first before it tries to coordinate backup. So what you saw right there was we had plenty of primary frequencies. We didn't have enough backup frequencies. That's why there was a discrepancy. But we have 50 frequencies. So before I say, oh, this is great, I'm going to go through here and just visually look at this and see if there's anything that was coordinated into a space that doesn't look good to me, meaning that there's a blob. Um, moving around, moving around, moving around, moving around. Looks good, looks good, looks good. I'm pretty okay with that. But if you wanted to calculate again, you can calculate a couple times. See where things land. And now, very important, you want to analyze and make sure everything's cool. You can hit analyze, but I always hit the check mark, then analyze. And you'll see this screen here. And what, what you want to be looking for, if there was something that wasn't compatible, after analyzing, it'll show up in red, and if you click on it, it'll show you why there's a conflict. Um, some tricks for that I've done in some other videos, but you can kind of lock the compatible frequencies and then coordinate again, but we'll get into that another day. So at this point, it's been a good coordination. I'm going to save, and then I'm going to lock frequencies, and now I'm going to assign and deploy. Um, if all your units are networked, it'll basically load those frequencies into all those transmitters and receivers. It looks like a Christmas tree over there right now. And then what I'll do is I'll take a glance at the receivers for the inputs, meaning the microphones and guitar packs, and make sure there's no RF level showing up in the meters. And then I will load all of the frequencies onto my Q pack for the ears with the antennas off, and then look at the RF activity on the pack. And if that's all clean, I know it's a good coordination. Hope that helps. Any more questions, you can always reach out to me uh, on the website, soundnerdsunite.org. Um, check out some more videos here, and I'm always available. Hope this helps. Thanks.